If you're trying to lose weight, you're gonna be really glad that you watched this video because it's gonna save you a whole lot of time on a lot of stuff that does not work. The first very popular weight loss trick I wanna go over is weight loss detox drinks. Detox drinks are not gonna magically make you lose weight. I repeat, if you cut up a cucumber, add a lemon, and mix it with some green tea, it's not gonna magically make you lose weight. There's so much hype about detox drinks, yet there's no solid evidence that they even help with fat loss. I'm not denying that they may have health benefits. However, when it comes to weight loss, most detox drinks have very little, if anything, to do with it at all. One thing that is interesting is apple cider vinegar. There was actually a study conducted on 144 obese Japanese adults. It was 12 weeks long, and one group had one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar a day, the other group had two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar per day, and the last group just had a placebo drink. And that's all, they, they didn't do any kind of variations to their diet plan. The interesting thing was that the group that had one tablespoon lost an average of 2.6 pounds, and the group that had two tablespoons lost 3.7 pounds. On top of that, the group that had the placebo ended up gaining about a pound. Now, even though apple cider vinegar does seem to help you lose a little more weight, if you have apple cider vinegar and ice cream, you're probably not gonna lose all that much weight at all. Your food intake and your calorie intake is a lot more important, but other than apple cider vinegar, most detox drinks are completely useless. Another new popular weight loss trick that doesn't work is liquid ketones. Let me explain. Ketones are a byproduct of ketosis caused by the process of converting fat to fuel. Your body makes them when it's in a calorie or a carb restricted state. And then your body uses those ketones for energy instead of glucose. You can burn a bunch of fat when your body enters ketosis and begins making ketones of its own. However, it doesn't work the other way around. Randomly adding in extra ketones through supplementation will not magically get you into ketosis. Not only that, but if you're still eating carbs while taking ketones, your body will continue running off of the carbs, and the ketones can even cause you to store extra fat. These ketones will only halt your fat loss. Remember, you wanna have your body convert your own fat cells into ketones, and then you want them to be used for energy. You don't wanna just add extra ketones. Does that make sense? The next pretty useless diet trick is to never skip breakfast, right? Eat like a king for breakfast, a queen for lunch, and like a pauper for dinner. Why? So you can have a food coma at work? Why not just do it in reverse? I mean, it's gonna be the same, if it's gonna be the same calorie and macro wise, it makes no difference if you eat like a king for dinner and a poor man for lunch, it doesn't matter. Most of the tricks that you hear about meal timing are actually myths. Look, if it works for you to eat a big breakfast, then do it. If that somehow prevents you from pigging out at night, go for it. But if you like having a big dinner, then don't blow your calories on a huge breakfast. It's that simple. Next is the body wrap. I have to mention this at least once a year. The body wrap does not work. If you take your body wrap and you dip it into a mixture of cinnamon, lemon, apple cider vinegar, and magic pixie dust, it still won't work. The only possible thing that a body wrap can help you with is it can help you lose some water weight, and it's not even very good at that. You'd be a lot better off going into a sauna, or even better, jogging with a sweatsuit. The only time that the body wrap works is when you combine it with diet and exercise. So in reality, you might as well not do the body wrap and just do the diet and exercising. Next on the list are diet pills and powders as well. Diet pills, they can help you lose a little extra fat and a little extra weight. However, they're not like apple cider vinegar. Many times, these diet pills are filled with harmful ingredients and they also raise your heart rate. It's like an extreme dose of caffeine, so it's very stressful on the body. I've seen people get nosebleeds, headaches. I've heard of people getting a lot worse than that as well. The extra two or three pounds that you lose after dieting for weeks are not worth it. The next popular trick that can sometimes blow up in your face is cheat days. Cheat days really do work very well for some people. It provides a mental break more than anything and it gives you a chance to reset and to take on the next week. For other people, it could completely throw them off. It's like exercising nonstop for a month and then just taking a week off. It's gonna be really hard to get back into the gym after that week off. A cheat meal easily can lead to a full out binge followed by another cheat day, followed by a cheat week and a cheat month. You really have to figure out whether cheat days are gonna be beneficial for you or not. One cheat meal a week, it's something that everybody can afford to do as long as it doesn't lead you to binge out and as long as it doesn't throw you off of your momentum. 
When I'm really, really serious about cutting, I won't have any cheat days for six weeks straight. Are you the type of person that could have a bite of ice cream and feel better? Or are you the type of person that would rather not have any ice cream at all because just one bite will make you wanna eat the whole thing? Another trick that we're always told about is the snack on nuts. I don't know that many people that could have one handful of nuts and feel any better than they did before they had that handful of nuts. On the other hand, I know a lot of people that will have one handful of nuts that leads to two and three and four. Most nuts are actually pretty high in calories and you can definitely gain fat from overeating healthy snacks like nuts and another one is fat-free popcorn. Again, if you eat too much of it, which most people will, then you're not gonna be burning any fat or losing any weight. Next up, we have the whole crazy idea that wine, especially red wine, will help you hack your way to weight loss. In reality, the only thing that wine is gonna do for you is it's gonna give you a bunch of excess calories, mostly in the form of simple carbohydrates and alcohol. Simple carbohydrates and alcohol, I don't know if you guys know this, they're just not that great for helping you lose weight. In fact, you'll probably spike your insulin, spike your blood sugar, and store fat rather than burn it. A great alternative would be water. And if you wanna drink alcohol, stick to hard liquors like unflavored vodka. Another super popular tip that I just couldn't leave out of this video at least is the whole eat five or six small meals a day thing. Now, don't get me wrong, if you were trying to build muscle, eating more times throughout the day can help you spike your insulin levels. It can also help you consume more calories throughout the entire day. And by putting yourself in a calorie surplus, you're gonna be able to build more muscle. It, it works for that. However, when you're trying to lose weight, we're aiming for a calorie deficit, which for a lot of people is a lot easier to achieve eating less frequently throughout the day. Again, this advice is given as a one size fits all approach, but it's really not that simple. Some people truly do better with smaller meals throughout the day because it keeps them from going hungry, which leads them to more control over their diet plan. Other people can't stand the burden of eating all day and they can't stand eating little meals that don't fill them up. Whether you choose to use your calories and macros on little small meals throughout the entire day or you bank them for bigger meals or just one big meal, it doesn't really matter for fat loss. They can both work, both methods work. The last weight loss trick is that you should lose weight slowly, right? This is absolutely ridiculous. The theory is that if you lose weight too fast, your metabolism will slow down and you'll stop losing weight. However, the truth is that any diet plan you do where you cut calories, even by a small number like 10%, will temporarily slow down your metabolism until you get out of that calorie deficit. Many people become demotivated when following the slow weight loss route. On a traditional diet plan, that slow weight loss route where you're only losing one or two pounds a week, it's demotivating. If you have a lot of weight to lose, by the time that you see results, you would have already been frustrated, demotivated, and honestly, you probably would have already quit by then. Aggressive fat loss plans are a lot of times the best route for people looking to lose a lot of weight, but they can be bad news if you don't have a long-term diet plan to back it up. You really only want to be doing aggressive cuts where you would cut your calories by as much as 40 to 45%. You really only want to be doing that temporarily for maybe a month or two months before you switch to a more sustainable diet approach for the long haul. I've helped so many clients lose 20 pounds in just six weeks and I'm willing to bet that if they didn't see the weight come off so fast, they might have quit. They probably would have quit and they would have not lost very much at all. I'm actually offering the same challenge right now for free on my gravitytransformation.com page. You get your own coach, a workout, a diet plan, and much, much more. And to get it free, all you have to do is simply stick to the plan. Don't forget to subscribe and remember to check out that challenge at gravitytransformation.com. I'll see you guys soon. Pump it.